walls are meant to be broken. They are obstacles to overcome. Often our mind goes to the Berlin Wall, the Great Wall of China, and dare I say, recent talk of walls in our country. But that would be a whole nother type of talk. Often we create these obstacles that are tangible, needed to be broken down. But what about those invisible walls that exist in our societies, cultures, and more personally, in our minds? These tangible objects can be scaled and breaking down, broken down, but those invisible walls, how do we begin to scale those? One invisible wall that exists in our country today is the disproportionate amount of males to females in positions of power and in one of the most lucrative industries of our future, technology. This is not a new phenomenon, as according to the National Center for Women in Technology, only 25% of the workforce is comprised of females. This same statistic is echoed in my computer science courses here at Doherty Valley High. In my research and experience, there are three viable options for overcoming this barrier and creating a more inclusive gender landscape for technology. The first one is female mentorship and social no networks. The second one is encouragement from male allies. And the third one is virtual reality as the new inclusive career pathway. Growing up as an Iranian American girl was not always easy. I started to struggle with my middle school math classes and I really didn't feel supported from my teachers or society at the time. I received messages that STEM-related careers is not something that girls do, it's what boys do. In fact, according to a recent study by Bramberger on encouraging girls into female, into STEM-related careers, both engineering and physics were seen to be masculine by boys and girls. I gave up and began to pursue more female-dominated careers like acting and teaching. If only I had a strong female mentor in my life to help me so I wouldn't give up. Another study concluded by Michelle Friend about envisioned middle schools envision future in computing that female students interested in CS felt more encouraged by their teachers and were more likely to have mentoring relationships. This included by teachers, peer mentors, and parents. Well, shortly after that, I got, a, I got hired as this position for CS teacher at Doherty Valley High, and I jumped at the chance because I wanted to inspire young females to not be so intimidated by the subject. Not only is this really important to be a real role model, but having strong social networks is equally as important. One example comes to mind when I started the first virtual reality club in the district. I wanted to encourage more girls to join, so on the first day, I was a little bit shocked when I saw the room was full of boys. Now, I asked one of my computer-inclined girls why she didn't join, and she said that because her friends didn't join and she felt a little intimidated, she didn't want to join. I started to recruit her friends, and shortly after that, the club grew to be about 50% female. What's even more interesting is by the end of the school year, the club had actually been more female dominated than male because some of the boys had dropped out. Now besides these peer on peer relationships in friend groups, it's equally as important to have a strong female role model in a company. Many companies have begun doing this. I went to a recent technology uh, panel at Unity and there was a lot of female executives on the board who were telling the people on, in the audience that having a strong female relationship in a big company was, they owe all their success to that person because they help them persist through trying times. Many companies such as Google, Apple, and DreamWorks are creating these programs between uh, 
senior females and junior females coming into the company for the first time. All of these are one of the pathways to getting more females into tech. But that brings me to my second point. We need encouragement from everyone, including our male allies. Now, in order to address this problem solution, we need to first address the problem. Bro culture, or the boys club, as it's been known, is a prevalent company culture today. Now, this dates back to the earliest civilizations where emperors and kings ruled with their entourages. Unfortunately, according to the National Center for Women in Technology, during the 1950s, only 37% of the workforce was female. However, in 2015, the workforce is half, comprised of half, more than half actually, of females, yet only a small percentage of that is made up of the tech industry. This is due to this program or culture, and it leaves women feeling discouraged, isolated, and dismayed. In fact, according to The Guardian, 73% of tech workers believe that the industry is sexist. With all these stories coming out, it's very apparent that this needs addressing. One more high profile case comes to us from Uber. The Uber CEO was, had resigned due to creating a workplace culture full of discrimination and sexual harassment. In fact, one of the Uber employees reported a case to her HR and was actually ignored. This is such a shame because with the hiring of new females, we need to make sure that we consistently create an environment that will keep them there as well. In fact, females are good for companies. They have been shown to bring about higher financial ret return and according to Elena Kavachko of Forbes magazine, they are seen to be better at 12 out of 16 competencies in leadership. Another way that companies are playing their part is one company in particular called Accenture is doing a program called 50-50 by 2025. They have created environments where they're going to hire, promote, and support females not only in technology but in positions of leadership. Many other companies such as Oculus, Google, have created these programs as well. We do need our male allies, but all of these can be supported through groups that are founded. In 2016, the ARBR Women and Allies group was founded by Eva Leon, co-founder, and they elicited the support of many male allies. In fact, they got the attention of big companies such as Oculus. I too started a foundation called XREDU, where I bring together different types of people to build products such as teachers, students, and developers. We hope to also encourage young females getting into STEM-related careers. Both of these are due to the rising new tech platform of virtual reality. Virtual reality, or VR, was started in the late 1960s by Ivan Sutherland, but as you can see, it was too big and scary looking to gain mass adoption. In 2012, Palmer Luckey invented the new modern lightweight head mounted device, and in 2014, it was acquired by Facebook for $2 billion. Thus begun the second rising of VR. Now you might be wondering, how is VR going to create a new inclusive pathway? All I know is that when I was sitting in Starbucks about three years ago, I was immediately transported to the middle of the Hawaiian Islands. The water was crystal clear blue and I could see straight to the bottom of the ocean. My mind was blown. All I know is that if it affected me this deeply, that it was sure to affect not only female students, but also everyone else. Thus begun my research study into virtual reality in the classroom. My overarching question was how will using virtual reality affect eighth grade girls' attitudes towards 
technology. I started by implementing a VR experience in a writing lesson, and I conducted pre and post surveys, as well as writing samples. The results were pretty shocking. My female students showed statistically significant rise in interest after using VR. Now, I kind of had to follow that up with why in particular would VR be attractive to females? And when I read more about the research, I realized that VR creates presence. It's artistic in nature. All of a sudden, you're in your best friend's house or at the beach. And when I looked at that same study by Michelle Friend, she noticed that computer-inclined girl and girls and non-computer-inclined girls both saw technology as an artistic medium. Now, this VR-creating presence defies gender, race, and religion. We need diversity of thoughts for not just the technology industry, but any industry, so that we can create products that are reflective of our whole world, not just some micro-society. This will hopefully inspire young females to seek the female mentorship, to get encouragement from male allies, to have social support networks, and hopefully, maybe virtual reality can be that new career pathway. All of this can hopefully aid in breaking down these invisible walls. Thank you.